Hey everyone, today at the shop, it is round two of the DMX 958XR preamp testing, this time with Apple Soundcheck turned off. I will be testing the preamp both wired and wirelessly with Apple CarPlay just to see if there's any output level difference there. And I'm also gonna try Bluetooth only. All right, so let's do it. Let's see what we find out. EQ is off, sound check is off. Audio quality set to lossless. And one thing I will mention is that sound check feature, there's something like that for all different apps and different phones. Christine in the comments let me know that in Android, they call it absolute volume, it's in the developer settings, but in different apps like in Tidal, it's called loudness equalization. In Spotify, it's called enable audio normalization, that's in Spotify. So you gotta be careful and, and just go through all of your phone settings and your app settings because you might be leaving a lot of performance on the table. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and see what this unit can actually do. I have the scope meter connected to the front preout. We've got the one kilohertz test tone. Before I press play, let me show you guys in the audio setup that I've turned everything flat and off. So the crossovers, we have the front, rear, and subwoofer set through. Car type is off. EQ is flat, subwoofer level zero. Time alignment is off. Everything is zeroed out. Balance fader is centered. Volume offset, that is zeroed out. Sound effects, I've turned everything off. Usually leave Supreme on, we'll see if that makes any difference. And that's it. So let's go to our track, press play, and let's see what happens. Let's see if we finally get five volts. About halfway up, signal looks nice and clean. 33, 2.89 volts, we're almost maxed out here. 4.57 is where we are tapping out. I was hoping we'd get five with the DMX 709S. I, when I did that quick test on the board, I got five. Let me see what I have to do. What happens if I go into audio? Well, first let's see if the sound effect makes any difference for Supreme. Got a little bit more with Supreme on, 4.72. That's not bad. Drive EQ didn't make any difference. Actually lowered it, it looks like. Loudness. Not with this frequency. It's not gonna have any effect. Okay, all right, so let's leave Supreme on and let's go into our volume offset for apps. Let's bump that up a notch. Oh, there we go, but now we have clipping. So we have 5.82 volts. And if I lower it a notch, it looks like we're clean. Oh, I forgot to turn off the phone. I should go do that. Okay, I'm back. So at 39 with the volume offset at plus one on the apps, we've got 5.29 volts and it's still looking nice and clean. So that's cool. I'm excited about that. Hmm. I'm going to leave that at plus one, knowing that if we want to get the full, well, no, I'll put it, let me put it back to zero because I'll, I'll just redo this. So if you leave that at zero, you can go all the way up. Supreme Mom, you're going to get 4.72 volts. Pretty close to five. And then if we do plus one on the apps, and call 39 or max, then we're getting 5.29 volts. All right, let's put that back to zero so don't forget. And let's switch to the sub pre out. Let's go back to our audio track and let's go to the 40 Hertz test tone. There we go. This is with subwoofer level at zero. Let's turn this baby up. Mmm, 4.24 volts. That's with subwoofer level at zero, but it's clean all the way up. So let's go into our subwoofer level menu. Uh, let's turn this up a little bit. 4.75, still can clean at plus one. Plus two, we have 5.33 volts and still clean. Interesting. So what if I leave this back at zero and go back into volume offset? plus one here, 
There we go. So plus one on volume offset. I'm at max. That's interesting. And it's clean on the subwoofer, but it wasn't clean on the front or the rear at plus one. We had to knock it down to 39. So at 39, I'm back to 4.76. So what if I put the subwoofer level at plus one at volume 39 with volume offset at plus one? Then we get our 5.33 volts. So that's how you can get five volts with this head unit. If you're using Apple CarPlay anyways, this is, I'm doing wired connection. We're gonna do plus one on our apps for volume offset, plus one on our subwoofer level, and call 39 your max volume, and then you're gonna get over five volts. Now, just for fun, let's turn that subwoofer level all the way up. 7.14. But let's see what your max volume is gonna be if you want your sub level all the way up with volume offset at plus one. Thirty. Cool. So you can get five volts, sub for level ten, at volume thirty, with the volume offset plus one. We go back to audio, lower that volume offset to zero, four point two five volts, and thirty two would be your max. Cool stuff. That's exciting. I'm happy. Are you guys happy? I'm really happy about that. All right, let's see what the internal amp does. Let's turn the scope meter over to the speaker leads. So when I was editing this, I realized I totally forgot to test wireless versus wired. One of the reasons I wanted to test that is Android Auto has done the basically the data through USB and the audio is always done through Bluetooth. That's one of the big reasons I was stuck with Apple is for sound quality purposes. I didn't want the audio to be limited to the quality of Bluetooth, but this does have that LDAC higher quality Bluetooth processor. So I'm going to repeat the same test now that I have my phone connected wirelessly. Oops, just trying to show it. No wires, we're wirelessly connected right now. I have everything set flat, just like I did for the first test. So EQ is flat, subwoofer level is zeroed out. We are connected to the front pre-out. Time correction, that is all zeroed out. I have volume offset flat. And for sound effects, I have Supreme off to start. When we did the first test, I got 4.57 on the front. So let's press play and see what we get wirelessly. Let's see if we get the same kind of reading. Let's see if we get 4.57. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. I didn't know what would happen. And if I go in and put Supreme on, let's go back to 4.72. Yes, that is so cool. Awesome. Let us let me switch the pre-out to the sub. I'm going to leave Supreme on. Leave subwoofer level at zero for now. Volume is still all the way up. 4.24. Yeah, that's what we're getting. Uh, 4.24 with everything flat. And if I go in and do volume offset at plus two. Was it plus two or plus one? Oh no, it was the subwoofer plus one, I think. That's right, that's right. Subwoofer level at plus two, we have 5.33, which is exactly what we were getting with wired. So that is awesome. Now, I believe that the wireless Android Auto is kind of like Apple where it's using Wi-Fi. Whereas previously when, you know, Android Auto first came out and it's a wired connection, the wired connection, I believe, is using Bluetooth for audio. But with wireless, I'm pretty sure it's using Wi-Fi. I am waiting for a call back from Kenwood just to confirm that 100% because I'm seeing kind of mixed information out there. But I thought, well, it would be cool if I tested my phone through Bluetooth audio. So I went into the settings and I have CarPlay basically turned off. I'm just connected for Bluetooth. I will show you that I'm actually still connected to this, our store Wi-Fi. I've got everything set flat and I'm going to go ahead, press play on my phone. And I do have the volume on my phone all the way up. Let's turn the volume up and see if we get the same reading. Wow. 
pretty much 4.719 yeah 4.72 all right cool let's let me switch this to the sub 40 gertz i left the sub at plus two 5.33 so there really is no noticeable difference at least in your output levels between wired wireless whether we're talking just doing bluetooth audio that's really interesting that's cool i you know i didn't know what i was going to see there i hope that information is helpful and then if anybody out there knows about how the wireless android auto is doing like definitively because you know i saw like a blog here and there said that yeah it's done through wi-fi but it didn't look like a reliable source of information any insider information on that would be awesome if you could post it in the comments just curious All right, we're gonna do this test with volume offset at zero for now. Let's go back to the one kilohertz test tone. Let's see how much voltage we get on the speaker leads. 12.9. That's a lot of power. But obviously, it's clipped. So what's gonna be your max volume on the internal amplifier? like 28 yeah 28 that signal looks nice and clean let's see if it makes any difference with a different frequency no 28 okay so internal amp is clean up to 28 what if we put what if we had that volume offset at plus one because we want a little bit extra kick out of our sub and we're just doing head amp and sub for now then your clipping point is gonna be 27. So one notch down. This is a nice deck. It's a great sounding unit. I, I haven't had a ton of time to play around with it, but briefly I was doing an AV comparison on the screen quality for a client who has this really sweet old Miata. It's like a 91 Miata and it's so clean. The interior, the exterior, except for the stereo. Somebody just hodgepodge this thing together. I should do a video on that one when that one comes in because that car is so, just so cool. And we were just looking at the Sony XAV AX6000 next to the DMX 958XR and the, the screen is so much more vibrant on the 958. It's just like, it's in your face. But then we were like, oh, well, what's the sound quality difference? Let's take a listen. And the 958, both of us kind of looked at each other like, wow, this is a lot nicer. Let's go with the 958XR. So. If you recall, when I was doing like the XAV AX6000 review, I was kind of ABing that unit with the Kenwood DMX709S with the wired connection for CarPlay, and they were really neck and neck. They were pretty indistinguishable between one another, very, very close in sound quality. So the fact that the 958 was a noticeable difference over the 6000 tells me that yes, they are using better quality components and when I have more time, that, that's on my to-do list. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that whiteboard behind me. I have a long list of videos that I have to make for you guys. And I really appreciate all the feedback and I'll keep adding it to the list and get it done. All right, everybody, that is it for this week's video. Plenty more to come. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this content, please give me a like, a subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.